What's up everybody? My name is Corey and welcome to the Stocks Channel, where we don't panic sell and we buy the dip in bull markets. Overall, we saw some volatility today, but we still got a bullish close. Therefore, I think the bull market is set to resume next week and we'll get into the details in this episode on why I think the bull market will start resuming from here. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. Now let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so on the SPY ETF, we did go down negative 0.12% today, but the price action closed back above that 13 EMA. Intraday at one point, we were trading down near that 20 simple moving average and we closed that gap that I talked about last night and we did find support at both of those levels and then we bounced and closed higher for the day. Now this sell-off was completely expected and I was talking about a technical sell-off coming and they usually last for one to three days. So this is officially the third day of selling and I think the selling is over and we're going back onto the bull and we're gonna start heading higher towards my price target at 377. Now why do I think the selling is over? Well, there's multiple things that told us in the technicals and the price action that the selling is likely over after today's price action. We found support at that 20 simple moving average and closed that gap, and we did get a really nice bounce and we almost closed near the high of the day. You can also see the price action came back down towards these slower moving averages like the 20 and the 50, and now that trend is getting ready to push the price back higher. So I always say that pullbacks and corrections are completely healthy in any bull market. There's no way the stock market can just go up in a straight line forever without any pullbacks. So you saw we had this really nice bull run where we continued to close over the 5 EMA and it just went on for too long without any significant amount of selling. And that's all we're really seeing here is just some technical selling, which is now likely over. The support levels held up with no problem and we can see there's no significant volume on selling. Volume looks completely normal so that we know the big money is not dumping any positions and there's no panic selling going on. That's why panic selling is not a strategy. You need to position yourselves where you have cash, and when you see these dips, you should be buying, not selling. So on the Stocks Channel Discord, we were raising cash as we ran up, and we were preparing for this sell-off, and we were going shopping. We were buying the dip, and now we're perfectly positioned for the bull run to resume next week, where we can start trimming our profits and raising more cash for the next dip. Rinse and repeat, and that is how you trade a bull market. We want to position ourselves to lock in profits and be able to take advantage of any pullbacks. Now buying the dip is not something we do recklessly. Why are we buying the dip? Well, we have a strong bullish trend. When we're in a strong bullish trend, that means the market is likely gonna continue to head higher, so we wanna buy low and sell high. We don't buy the dip in bear markets. We buy the dip in bull markets and we are in a bull market. You can see how strong this trend is with all of these moving averages stacked to the bull side. There's nothing technically wrong with any of these charts, and we continue to say night after night that this is a very strong bull market and the price action is also showing us that the market wants to continue to head higher. So this pullback did set up some room to run and we're no longer near the upper Bollinger Band. You can see the upper Bollinger Band and the lower Bollinger Band are upward sloping and they look like the price action wants to continue to head higher because all of the technicals are trending upward. Now here's another way we can tell that the bull market is likely to resume. Look at the volume in the last five minutes. There was a huge spike in volume in the last five minutes and that is indicative of a bear short squeeze. There was a lot of people that were shorting this market this week, hoping that it would fail and waiting for it to break below support, and they were trying to profit from that move. Well, in the last five minutes, when they realized the stock market wasn't going to crash and it was holding up above support, they had to cover their short positions. So this huge spike in volume in the last five minutes tells us that the bears are now hibernating and Santa Claus is coming to town. In all seriousness, this bull market is likely to continue to resume because the bears are not winning and they're not finding any cracks in the technicals or the price action to drive the market lower. It would take some serious weakness in this chart to get the bulls to stop buying the dip. Now let's check on our survey this week and we can see there is 48% bulls, which is a negative 1% decrease from last week. We still have about 27% bears and 25% of people that are neutral. That is a lot of bulls, but this market is likely to continue to head higher until absolutely everybody is a bull. The market likes to trap people, and while there are a lot of bulls, it's rightfully so because the stock market continues to head higher. And we did see an over 4% increase in bears this week. So there's definitely still money on the sideline, and there's definitely money still trying to short this market. As long as there's people shorting and still holding cash, the market is likely to keep heading higher. What do you think people in cash are doing? They're waiting for a sizable dip so that they can buy in. What do you think they're going to do next week when they realize that the dip is over and that dip that they were waiting for to pull back 5-10% to 10 never happened? Eventually, they're going to FOMO into the market. So there's a lot of cash on the sidelines that's likely to come into the market next week 
as people realize that the dip is now over and we're heading higher. So I'll leave it there on the S&P 500. And like I said, we did find support at the 20 simple moving average and I'm getting ready for the S&P to start heading higher towards my price target. So remember our price target is above at $377. Next up is the NASDAQ 100 triple Q's ETF. And we see a very similar story on the NASDAQ finding support at the 20 simple moving average and bouncing and closing near the high of the day. If we go over to a five minute chart, we see the same increase in volume where we could see there was a short squeeze near the end and the bears covered their positions. So we had a really bullish close and the price action overall was pretty bullish closing over that 13 EMA. So you see the trend is still really bullish. All of the moving averages are still stacked to the bull side and we now have room to run above because we've now created an air pocket where the price action could start running. So our price target on the queues is up here at $312 and we're likely going to get there very quickly. This market is no longer technically overbought and there's still a lot of cash that's gonna start FOMOing in and any bears that are left are going to get short squeezed which is only gonna add fuel to the fire. So I am looking for a melt up low volume situation and then that short squeeze will hit and the volume will increase and we'll start going parabolic up into the 312 level. Once we get to 312, that could be a great level to start taking some profits. Our support level was the 20 simple moving average and we did get confirmation bounces off that level for two days in a row. So the bulls are back in town and they're ready to start driving prices higher. On the Dow Jones DIA ETF, we also see it found support right at that 20 simple moving average and bounced and closed right at the 5 EMA. There's no way you can look at this chart and see anything other than bullish. The price action and the trend are bullish and the Dow Jones is likely just going to continue to grind higher and form new all time highs. On ARK-K, we did find resistance at that 125 level, which I said would be a strong resistance and it's gonna take a lot for ARK-K to break through that level. So for ARK-K, I would be a little more patient and I would try to accumulate around the 5 EMA, but more importantly, around the 13 EMA is where I'm watching. ARK-K is a little bit overbought still and it does have a lot of Tesla in it and Tesla could sell off at any point driving ARK-K lower. However, there's no way you can look at this chart and say it's not bullish, so I'm not saying it won't go higher, but it will have to prove a point and close above 125 before it can head to 128. I still think there's more risk in ARK-K than there is upside potential, but I will let you be the judge of how you put your money to work. Next up is the VIX, which is our fear indicator. And we saw the VIX find resistance at the 50 EMA and our resistance level at 24.8. And we did close down here around 23. So the VIX is spiking, which is completely normal during a sell-off. There's nothing in the VIX that says this small correction and this small selling is going to turn into anything bigger. As long as we're below the 50 EMA, the VIX is still in a very strong bear trend and it's likely going to continue to bleed out after this selling is over. So I'm looking for the VIX to start heading back lower going into next week, which is going to help drive prices higher. Next up is the US dollar. And we do have the US dollar just kind of hanging around after that dead cat bounce. And it looks like it's starting to weaken again and it's going to start heading down for another leg lower. A weak dollar is a strong stock market. And I don't see anything in the dollar that implies it's going to strengthen and start heading out of this bear trend. The price action still looks really weak and it's in a very strong bear trend, which is going to push prices even lower. On gold, we usually see strong gold with a weak dollar and we are seeing gold stabilize around these moving averages and it looks like it's consolidating and getting ready for another leg higher. Resistance levels on gold are going to be 1860 and if we can break above 1860, I'm looking for a price target of 1930. So I'm bullish on gold and this looks like a great opportunity to start buying into gold for the next bull run. On silver, we see a very similar sign as gold consolidating and cooling off and getting ready to head up to a price target of $25. On Bitcoin, we have some bad news because we are breaking down and we're starting to get a short-term bear trend. As long as Bitcoin is breaking down and we have a bear trend, my price target remains at the 50 EMA somewhere around 16,500. If we break below the 50 EMA, we could come all the way back down to 14,000. Now, if Bitcoin starts reversing this trend, it could come out and break above 19.6 and our upside price target is 21.2 if we get there. On Apple, our market moving stock, we did get some support right around that 120 level and we bounced higher and closed back above the 13 EMA. We still have a very strong bull trend on Apple and Apple is a market moving stock. So I'm looking for Apple to come back up and break above a resistance level at 124. And once Apple can break and close above 124, my price target is all the way up here at $136. Apple is in a bull market right now, so as soon as it starts running, it's likely to drag the whole entire stock market up with it. So I'm bullish on Apple and the price action and the trend look really good. On the financial sector, we're still getting some really nice bullish price action and this really strong bull trend is maintaining and picking up speed. The price action is still above the 13 EMA and all of these moving averages are still bullish. On industrials, we still have a really strong bull trend and some really good price action and I'm looking for industrials to continue to head higher. On the healthcare sector, we see the bull trend still maintaining its strong momentum and we see that 13 EMA starting to separate from the 20. 
The price action is still above the 13 EMA and I'm looking for the healthcare sector to continue to strengthen. So on the S&P 500, we're looking at a weak dollar, a VIX level that's gonna start bleeding out as fear leaves the market and we have strong sectors across the board. So I'm looking for the S&P 500 to gain some strength next week and start heading higher towards our price target at 377. Remember this market is about being disciplined and maintaining your profits. So don't be afraid to sell your winners and raise some cash to buy the dip. There's always the Stocks Channel Discord trading community if you're looking for a group to trade with and you can join from the link in the video's description below. All right, it's time to crank up the heat. The first hot stock of the night is of course gonna be Tesla. And we see Tesla did cool off a little bit and close below the five EMA. So Tesla is ending wave five on my chart and I do think it's reaching a top soon. However, the question is, are we gonna break over 650 and get to 700 or is this the top and we're starting to cool off? So in order to answer that, we need to watch this trend. Right now we're still bullish and the price action still looks good, but if we start breaking and closing below 587, it's likely we saw the top and Tesla is done for. However, if we start closing above the 5 EMA and getting another close over 650, that means we're likely going to 690 to 700. So Tesla's just cooling off a little bit, which it likes to do after a huge run. So watch the price action. Below 587 is bearish and above 650 is bullish. Anywhere in between is a complete coin flip 50-50. So if you're taking a guess, good luck. Next up is Neo, and I have Neo ending wave three and going into that wave four, and I now think that wave four is ending. So in order to explain this, I need to jump over to this one hour chart, and I have Neo in this long wave four correction pattern, and it does look like we're starting to find a floor somewhere around $41. So remember, 41 was one of my first support levels that we're watching, and 41 continues to show me that it's likely going to be the bottom of wave four. So I'm getting really bullish on Neo, and I'm starting to accumulate my long position now. Around 41 is the support level I'm starting to buy at, and I'm waiting to see if we can break and close above $44 to start the next run to my next price target. So going back to the daily chart, if we do break below $41, my next buy trigger is somewhere around this 50 EMA, which is gonna be around 38 and a half to $39. That's also one of our Fib retracement levels at 39, so that's gonna be another really good buying level. However, I'm not sure if Neo's actually gonna get there, so I'm starting to accumulate my long position now. My wave four will end somewhere in this area, and I have wave five going all the way up to a price target of either 52 to 61. So we'll call 52 price target one, and we'll call 61 price target two. I always like to give two price targets because you really should be taking some profits at the first price target. So I have Neo as a buy, and hopefully this hot stock starts picking up some heat very soon and driving higher towards the 50s. This is a great buying opportunity because this stock is a hot stock, and it's gonna have a lot of people chasing it once the move starts. So try to get in near the bottom and ride it out and enjoy those sweet profits. Next up is Palantir stock and I still have Palantir in an ABC correction. So we had that pullback which finished wave one and then we had the bounce to a lower high which finished wave B and now we're somewhere in a wave C. I still think Palantir could find support at the 13 EMA but if we break below that it's likely we're going to come down somewhere around $24 or the 20 simple moving average. Now the 20 simple moving average is coming up here pretty quickly and it's likely going to be at $24 in no time flat. So I would start buying Palantir somewhere around 24 and if we break below that you're looking to buy somewhere around 21. Palantir is looking like it's still consolidating and you can see it is starting to get into this wedge pattern. So it's not bullish until it breaks out to the upside. We don't want to make any assumptions about a consolidation that it has to break to the upside. These consolidations could end bullish or bearish. Don't let your bias affect you even though we do have a bullish trend that could end and this stock is a new stock so I don't have a lot of data on it. So right now the trend looks bullish and I am giving it a bullish bias but that doesn't mean that can't change and we could break to the downside. So be patient and let this consolidation and this correction play out before you get too bullish on this stock. Next up is Twilio stock and this stock is one of my favorite stocks that I'm super bullish on and you can see we broke the price target at 338 so that's now going to be a possible support level. So we'll go ahead and turn that green and remember over 338 we're now trading at new all-time highs and my next price target is way up here at 373. Do I think you should chase this stock if you're not already in it? Probably not. Wait for it to cool off and try to buy off these support levels. So we have 338 and the 5 EMA somewhere around 330 and this previous resistance which should be newfound support at 321. Twilio is one of those great hot stocks that I was telling you about way back here. 
So hopefully you took some of my suggestions and bought into Twilio and you should be getting handsomely rewarded for it now. Next up is Boeing stock and this high flying stock is still cooling off and it's still sitting right at support at 230. So I do think Boeing is a buy the dip stock and we're definitely at the dip scenario. So I would be a buyer of Boeing at 230 and I'm looking for Boeing to start heading higher towards my next price target at 260. I have some brand new hot stocks for you all coming up next week but I have to give them to my Discord members first so they have time to decide if they wanna buy them, but they will be coming at you next week. And if you wanna come trade with the Stocks channel, there's a link for the Discord server in the video description below. Have a great weekend, everybody. I hope you're crushing it in this market and making a lot of money. And as always, I will see you in the next episode. Hey,